Over the last week, I have been traipsing through the paper craft environments that surround Toad Town in Paper Mario the Origami King for Nintendo Switch. Nintendo sent me out a copy to review, and I have been ready to jump in front of the camera and tell you guys about this game a couple of times over the last few days especially, but then I've discovered, nope, nope, there's a lot more. There's a lot more to this game. It is a very, very, very big game, and it's much meatier and honestly much more satisfying and enjoyable and ambitious than I first expected it to be. Because you think of Paper Mario games as kind of cutesy, clever, funny RPG lights, and that's certainly applicable here. This definitely hits those expectations, but this is a Nintendo Switch game. This is a game that definitely also hits the highs that we've come to expect by you know, Switch versions of established Nintendo franchises like Pokemon and Zelda and Mario, and it's less of a straightforward role-playing experience. It leans much more in the adventure category, I think. It reminded me a little bit of playing Luigi's Mansion or some of the Lego games. Definitely kind of like a Mario meets Zelda kind of vibe to this as well. There's a lot of action in the game. There's also a lot of turn-based action in the game, but there's a tremendous amount of exploration. The whole idea with this title is that Mario and Luigi show up in a Mario Kart uh, to uh, attend the origami festival that's taking place in Toad Town, and they recognize that things are amiss. This nefarious character named Oliver, the origami king, has stolen Princess Peach's castle and has started to transform characters that Mario and Luigi know and love, the paper versions of them, into folded versions, or, you know, origami versions of these characters. And in fact, Oliver also enlists the uh, I, uh, this army of folded soldiers to carry out his dastardly plan of turning the Paper Mario world into origami. And so you have to fight the folded soldiers, and along the way you're going to uh, lose and find and lose and find Luigi, but you're also going to uh, encounter a whole bunch of other allies along the way. And chief among them is this little origami uh, character named Olivia, who happens to be Oliver's sister. And she wants to right the wrongs, and she's along for the ride. And what's cool about Olivia is along the way, you're going to unlock all kinds of origami abilities in this character, like transforming into a giant earth-shattering turtle. You also unlock early in the game this idea of being able to attach paper arms to Mario. There are like, I think, a thousand fold arms that give Mario these uh, accordion like appendages that allow him to grasp and bash at uh, things that are very far away from the character, which is very cute. And you actually have motion detection in either your Pro Controller or the uh, Joy Con, whether you're grabbing stuff and maybe you're slingshotting a bad guy or you're bashing onto uh, streamers, which is what you're trying to do. That's the core idea in the game, is you're trying to uh, bash away these streamers that the Origami King has wrapped around Princess Peach's castle and free the castle and bring peace back to the land. And the way that you take care of these streamers is you actually have your thousand-fold arms and you bash against them until they're dissolved and and then you watch the streamer disappear. It's amazing the amount of ingenuity, clever design strokes, and just the imagination that we see in this game. All of the surfaces in the game are crafted out of paper or cardboard. There's like a different weight to some of the stuff. You, you know, you'll see paper trees and paper mountains and rolling hills and paper water even that you're, you're gonna cruise through. And what's so impressive and really honestly shocked me, I wasn't expecting to do as much traveling as you do in this game. You're up in mountains, you're cruising down river rapids. I was in this Shogun theme park where I was actually chucking shurikens at targets into all kinds of buildings and museums and finding toads everywhere. I was in ancient Egyptian-style tombs and desert buildings. I was sailing out onto the open ocean in my own ship. I had a submarine that I was able to get into and dive under the water with. And the whole time, you're trying to free all of the toads in all of these different areas that you go to because the, the paper toads have just been scattered everywhere and they're hidden everywhere. They're crumpled up in the little balls. They're shaped like bugs and birds and fish and frogs and... Uh, lizards and you bash them with your hammer or you bash a wall and you know a little folded or rolled up 
toad will pop out and they all thank you before they run off to their jobs or you know their fill their respective roles within this world and sometimes those roles will be to be shopkeepers and they'll sell you all kinds of cool weaponry and accessories that you'll use in your fights and honestly those fights are the core original concept here what the developers kind of focused on is they wanted to give you a puzzle uh, mechanic in your turn-based gameplay so they put all of the combat on this circular platform which has a series of rings on it and all of the bad guys are laid out across the platform and you have to spin the rings and align the bad guys perfectly so that they can either be smashed with a hammer which takes kind of a, a more of a horizontal pattern on the ground or you can bounce on them with your footwear whether you're in regular boots or shiny boots or iron boots and those have to be all lined up in perfect order and so what happens every time a fight with the bad guys starts is you get a, a set amount of time to r spin the rings around properly line everybody up and then you can go to town with your boots or your hammer or some of the weapons that you might have familiar mario weapons like flame flowers or the uh, tanuki tail or something like that or pow bricks so it's quite elaborate and it definitely makes you constantly think about the alignment because after you've taken down a row maybe a new row will come on but they'll be scattered across the board and you've got to figure out where to position everybody you've also uh you are constantly growing a toad audience around the fight and they're in in the stands around you and you can get them to cheer you on and throw out some helpful weaponry or something like that. It's pretty cool. You also can ask for hints from Olivia the entire time. Olivia is very helpful in this game, although you're constantly... Uh, you know, on your own as Mario. You might go out as a, in a party, but it's Mario that you're controlling. And the, uh, the AI of um, your ally that might be fighting beside you isn't always that great. They might trip over their shoes or something like that. The ally system is actually very fun in this game because obviously what we uh, kind of depend on a Paper Mario experience for is a sense of humor and uh, a, definitely a sense of charm and a, and a sense of... Uh, paying homage to the history of Mario, and that certainly is a part of this game. I think the writing is fantastic. I was absolutely laughing out loud at specific moments during the game, and it's not just with your buddies that you're out on the adventure with, but it's also all of these different characters that you run into. They're, it's always very, very cute and clever. Uh, you can tell that the writers, uh, you know, on the Japan side, but also all of the localization and the writers that took place, uh, I, I would presume, at Nintendo's Treehouse, Excellent, excellent work there. Uh, and I was also surprised that there were some, you know, real tender moments. There are moments of uh, real reflection and some depth and uh, uh, looking at a little bit of grief and um, diving into that. And I was not expecting that, but it sort of adds this extra emotional weight to the the whole adventure and this enterprise. You know, you just feel like, wow, this there's a lot more to this game than you would at first kind of think there is. And that's also especially true when you take a lot of the core mechanics that you get into with the combat sequences, with the regular goons, all of the folded soldiers that you'll run into, and then you transpose that action and those learnings to the boss fights, which are incredibly challenging. Sometimes those go on for a long time because what's introduced in the boss battles are a bunch of arrow direction pointers and uh, power-up um, positions on the platform. So you get Mario walking in a specific direction, he'll encounter another direction, direction arrow and he'll change direction. The clock is counting down the whole time. You've got to hit the right marks and you've got to use the right strikes and the right tools to take down these various bosses, which are all based on stationary. So you're fighting like a giant rubber band guy or a, a hole punch guy. The hole punch boss fight was a particularly harrowing adventure, I'll tell you. And that's kind of what's so impressive about this game. It never loses sight of its its sense of humor and this idea that the you know everything is crafted out of paper, but it's also a very tight and very fun game to play. Like the jumping mechanics or the ability to bash everything with your hammer outside of combat, and you use your hammer in lots of different places. Sometimes it's a bit frustrating because you'll find that you know you're looking to 
clean up all of the toads that are lost everywhere. And so you're just bashing your hammer on every surface that you can see. And that can get a little bit uh, frustrating. And just, you feel like, I don't know if this will break. I don't know if this will break. And so you're inching along inside of the world. And I did get, there were definitely a couple of moments where it was like, why am I just bashing at everything? This seems silly. But then some, you know, new area will open up or a door will open or some secret will happen and, and sort of reveal another level of the developer's imagination and the commitment to build something very special here. I was certainly impressed by the whimsy of this game right away, but I expected it to be a lot thinner, a lot more paper thin than it is. Now I'm gonna score this in a second, but I wanted to give my daughter Ruby a chance to weigh in with some of her thoughts of playing Paper Mario, the Origami King. Hey Rue, what'd you think of Paper Mario, the Origami King? Alright, I didn't love it myself, but I'm sure a lot of people will. <laughs> what did you uh, like about it? I liked all of the adventure and all of the things that you can do. Did you like the artwork? Yeah, it was really cool. It's all based on origami and paper. Like, the, the game is called Paper Mario and the Origami King, so like, obviously there's something to do with origami in it. <laughs> and I love origami. Were you impressed by the imagination of the game creators? Yeah, they're really good at making games, it seems like. What didn't you like about the game? I didn't like that the bosses were nearly impossible. I needed to ask my dad to finish all of the bosses for me, so thanks, Dad. <clears throat> so you feel like the difficulty isn't balanced, so sometimes it's too difficult and sometimes it's too easy? Yeah, I wish you could change the difficult level or something. What has been your favorite area to explore so far? I like the Shogun theme park. It was pretty fun. I just finished that. Now I'm on the ship. Princess Peach is what the ship's called. It's kind of, it's not like the, well it is the Princess Peach, but it's kind of odd because the ship isn't Princess Peach. <laughs> Do you like the characters and the storytelling and the little bits of dialogue that they all have? Yeah, it's quite good. The one thing that I didn't like was that you're so thin, but you can get knocked out of pathways really easily. Did you like finding all the toads? Yeah, I haven't really noticed that there's this little um, sheet that tells you like you've gotten 23% of toads. I came up with 23 because that's how many I have right now. <laughs> yeah, each area of the map gives you a percentage of the toads that you find and the secret question mark boxes and the collectibles. And the non-bottomless holes. <laughs> the non-bottomless holes. There's so much to collect and uh, find in this game. Is it a bit overwhelming? A little bit, but there's this one thing that I like that you have to throw um, paper mm -hmm. called confetti. So, so you can like smoosh flowers and then confetti will come out of it. But I got this um, thing that turns my confetti into cherry blossoms. It's real like cool. It was a lot of money though. So from what you've played so far, what would you give the game? I give it a seven out of 10. And are you gonna keep playing? Maybe. Okay, thanks darling. Yeah, another thing that I absolutely loved about this game is the soundtrack. The music is incredible. There's lots of sequences in the game where characters are dancing or singing. There's stage performances that are just impressive and clever and funny. I will say that it does take a little while to get around in the game. Like there were lots of times where I just wish Mario would move a little bit quicker and get to places a little bit quicker. And the other thing that I would say, and you know, this is, um, Something I've been bringing up for a long time with Nintendo stuff, but it feels like it's real, especially when you've got a script that's this good, it really feels like the opportunity is there for Nintendo to hire fantastic voice actors and performers and to bring in another level of joy into the experience, into the performance and into the production of the game. The craftsmanship that's on display in terms of storytelling and character building is so great 
that another brushstroke with uh, the, the performances that are like world class. And we're seeing just incredible work in games now. Actors really know what they're doing with video games. And there are fantastic casting directors. And I know that's risky. We have decades of playing Nintendo type games like this where we do read everything. But I feel like that's something that Nintendo should be looking at. If it's not gonna be on this platform, maybe it's the next Nintendo platform, but it definitely feels like it's time for Nintendo to embrace the idea of voice work. But those are my quibbles. You know, honestly, this is a terrific game. It's another excellent Switch pickup, and it's absolutely worth your time, and it's worth your money. I'm gonna give Paper Mario the Origami King an 8.5 out of 10.